here I am. It is uh, Friday, uh, April, what's the date? April 12th, 2024, and this is the weekly video. I'm doing it, uh, as many of you know, we, we're on vacation right now. We're down in uh, the sunny uh, little country of Belize. Uh, it's beautiful here today. We had a little light rain light last night, cooled things down beautifully. Uh, the air temperature today is around 83 degrees, 85 degrees, and it's only... Uh, uh, about nine in the morning. It'll get up to the mid-80s, 86, 87, that'll be fine for the rest of the day. But anyway, uh, we found ways to, uh, as you can see, to do the video. Uh, we brought the right equipment along this time, got the phone set up, had the software, um, uh, the proper software and stuff so we can get it uploaded. The, the Wi-Fi signal here is very, very weak though. It is, it is the tropics. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, 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 it's not America when you want Wi-Fi. It's a little bit different down here. But it works, and uh, we're pretty pleased with it overall. We were last time. So here we are. Uh, not a lot happened um, uh, this past week on, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the live auctioneer site and Valuable. There were a few auctions that closed. We'll get to some of those results in a little bit. Uh, but I want to go through some of the eBay results. Uh, this is not going to be a long video uh, because of uh, uploading from here is a little difficult. <laughs> We did some tests yesterday and uh, it was pretty comical. Signal goes in and out. We had to actually turn the, uh, uh, my laptop on, um, turn it into a, a hotspot so we could actually get signals um, out of, even out of the deck here, which is on the water. And we'll be putting up some video. We have some videos and things we've done that we'll be sharing with everybody uh, as the week goes on and the next week goes on and the week after. But here we are. All right, now, uh, what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Oh, this, this is some of the results from uh, eBay last week. Uh, one of them was this, this very nice Shawan um, Jun, Jun type, as they call the Jun style glaze goo form vase. Um, late Ming, early Qing dynasty, a nice one. I like the glaze on it. And these, of course, are, are, are well known for their thick glazes and bright colors and, and, and strong potting and so forth. These are never porcelain pieces. These are always pottery, uh, a little bit different. And as you can see here on the screen, I just clicked to uh, show another image of it. And it, it it's having a hard time uh, loading it. And that's, that's part of the, the problem down here, of course. But at any rate, it was a nice piece and it sold for $400. All right, and then hopping along over to uh, uh, this. This was that uh, iron glaze, rust glaze piece that we talked about last week, the incense burner in a very well-known form based on uh, Ming incense burners and earlier burners and so forth. This one is done in ceramic, of course, in porcelain. Um, nice looking, uh, nice looking piece. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you the bottoms because it will take me three or four minutes for the image to upload. Uh, it, it, took, it took these images that I'm using here right now uh, about, uh, took me about an hour to get these images just to appear here because again, slow internet. Uh, but this was a nice piece and it did well. Uh, we liked it a lot uh, when we talked about it last week and ended up going for $858, which is a good price for it, uh, but not an overpayment. It was, it's a nice thing. It's an unusual form, nice color and so forth. And then uh, hopping over to here, um, there was this, that uh, federal period uh, monogrammed export wear cup and saucer set. Uh, very fine condition. I, I'm surprised it went, it went so reasonably. This was a, from a seller over in the UK um, that I hadn't seen before, Le Ventique Maison. Um, and they are in, uh, let's see, where are they in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the UK? Uh, it went for 125 US, which is a, a, a very reasonable price for a set like this with the, with the gilding and the sepia and everything in very, very fine condition with a monogram on it and this beautiful basket at the bottom. It was a nice example. Um, and uh, again, uh, a very good thing to buy if you're, if you're a China trade collector. And uh, then going along over to here, you can see the lag even just in reloading the pages here. <laughs> it's sort of funny. Um, is this nice uh, late Ming, early Qing Gu form vase. Uh, this was a nice thing and, and I think it went very reasonably. I don't think uh, $698 is at all too much for this. I like the color, um, the, the patina on it was quite nice. The workmanship was nice. The proportion um, of the different sections of it were beautifully put together. Uh, a, a very pleasing uh, piece of bronze. And uh, measured, it wasn't a big one, though it, lo it looks like it, might, it could be, you know, this form you can find in, in every size from five or six inches all the way up to uh, as big as 15 to 18 inches even at times. And uh, this one was a smaller one. It was six inches or so in height. Uh, and it went for $698, but very, very attractive uh, piece. And then uh, this, the uh, uh, soapstone carving of an immortal seated on a, on a, on a, on a on looks like he's on a Fu Lion. Um, late Ching, uh, but nicely done, 
well well uh, well carved all over and uh, it could use all the things like this uh, so, sometimes people just as a little aside sometimes when people buy soap stones they clean them with soap and water you don't ever want to do that you never want to clean soapstone with soap and water because soapstone develops a very nice surface and it has sort of an oily surface that absorbs absorbs oils from the air around it from being handled and so forth. And if you use soap uh, soap and water on it, it will it will it will it will pull that surface off, and you'll end up with a very dry, rather un, unappealing surface. Now you can re-oil it. Um, I, I I know one guy he used olive oil on his soapstone figures. Um, he would wipe it down with a little olive oil and just rub it off and he would repeat it. Also, it, it's a very good idea to handle soapstone with your fingers, let the natural oils of your skin put that surface back on it. And every while you'll see a piece of soapstone that is just beautifully, beautifully, uh, has a beautiful, smooth, creamy surface on it. And that's because it's never been cleaned with soap and water usually. Soapstone polishes quite well, but it looks a whole lot better um, uh, with uh, 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 some natural oil on it from the environment and being handled over time. The same is actually true for bamboo. Uh, if, you, if you ever get a bamboo brush pot or a piece of carved bamboo, you want to be very careful about how you clean it uh, because you can destroy the surface on it in a hurry with soap and water or any, anything like that. Usually, I, I would say just use maybe um, a, a room temperature damp cloth damp paper towel and just wipe it down and leave it don't don't try to oil you know don't try to clean it with a toothbrush and soap and things you're going to end up with a very dry nasty looking piece of bamboo on your hands and the same thing happens with soap stuff all right and this went fine it, went, it sold for only 138 dollars perfectly nice carving well done uh, i like the facial expression of the food lion in particular i thought that was a nice touch and then this the fan uh, a very well-known type of china trade fan um gilt lacquer um, it looked like it was in pretty good shape all around. Uh, there might have been a couple of breaks in the threading. Now, the threading that linked these together often uh, wear out over time, and you'll often find very nice fans that have been re-threaded uh, because the, 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 from opening and closing, the fabric that uh, allows it to, to work um, uh, comes apart, and it's unavoidable in many cases. Occasionally, you'll find old fans that are in boxes or stored in collections and so forth, but in general, um, uh, they, they tend to wear out, so you want to sort of uh, always bear that in mind. If you see one that has replaced, uh, replaced silks holding the sections together here, they used, it looks like a replacement, they use black, which is perfectly fine. Um, expect to see that, don't, don't be put off by that ever. Um, when they're physically damaged, the blades are broken, um, blades are missing even sometimes, um, then you want to um, um, give it maybe a second thought, unless it's a very rare type, and then you just have to own it, and then you, you go ahead and do that. All right, and then over to this. This is a plate I talked about last week because I like the color combination, and I like the way the willow trees were drawn. I like the drawing of the blue and white, and then the way they framed it with this uh, rather nice outlined uh, 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 ground in red and then filled it in with this sort of gilt brown, uh, 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 gilt brown uh, uh, tone. I think it's actually gilding, but the way it looks here, because it's worn a little bit thin in places, it almost has a, a, a brownish tone to it, but I think it's just gilding inside of red outlines. And then they have these spearhead borders on the interior to sort of focus your eye toward the center decoration. And you'll notice here that the, the quality, uh, last week I mentioned that the, the, the way the willow trees are done with these chevron devices forming the willows, the willow leaves, I think was very, very effective. And then you have this massive oversized peony uh, showing up, which was something that often the Chinese artists often did on uh, these pieces. So uh, it was a nice piece. Ended up doing pretty well. It sold for $306, but I liked it as a plate. I thought it was a good looking piece of porcelain. And then this, another piece of soapstone, this was uh, offered by Carpe Diem, uh, Carpe Diem Picker. Uh, he's a regular seller on eBay. He's down in Alabama uh, here in the States. And uh, this was a nice figure. And as I recall, it was seven or so inches long, I think. Um, seven and a quarter inches long, yeah. And it was a nice one, nicely carved. Um, nice stone, lots of detail in the stone, a surprising amount of detail. When you, when you zoom in on it, you'll see all the little clouds and whatnot added uh, to, to the broad areas of the smooth surfaces um, were decorated. And I like the expression on his face. Love the expression. He looks very happy. He's sort of laying back, relaxed in his, in his robes, comfortable, and, um, and very attractive in that recumbent position. So he's enjoying his day. Maybe he's you know, you can you sort of picture him sitting out maybe in a park somewhere or in a, in a garden, you know, uh, just just taking in the day, appreciating things. 
And then over to this, the uh, this this big uh, uh, Femi Verde Dalsai porcelain uh, charger, uh, Kangxi period. I think this had a repair to it, as I recall. Um, yeah, it did. It had a repair to it. It wasn't perfect. But I, I put it in the newsletter. Sometimes I put things in the newsletter because maybe they're not perfect, but um, there's something that, you know, the, the, the people that don't have enormously deep wallets uh, can, can afford to buy these. And it's a nice example. You'll notice the Ling Bai, the fungus coming up out of the ground here is nicely colored. Uh, very, very attractive porcelain. And uh, it was around 15 inches in diameter, so it was a pretty big piece and, and very well uh, composed. Uh, and it sold for $250 on just two bids, uh, which because because it was damaged, it put people off. And sometimes you can get some great shelf pieces uh, that way that are very, very attractive. If this plate were perfect, it probably would have sold for uh, $1,000 to $1,500, somewhere in there. Uh, so it'll, it'll give you some idea. This. If, if you're not too concerned about condition and you just want really interesting looking, well done objects, you can often do very, very well by being willing to accept a piece that's been repaired. So it's... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's not a bad way to go. All right, and there were, and, the, and the other things last week did pretty well. There were some little Ming jarlets that sold fairly reasonable for a hundred or two hundred dollars. Uh, that's fine, um, and so forth. So, uh, uh, and then we got a bunch of things that'll be coming up this week um, that we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, just go through a few of them that are closing this week coming up. This is from uh, uh, Jay Garrett's Limited over in the UK. Uh, he often puts up. He focuses on small things. Uh, typically, uh, it seems like everything he puts up is under under eight inches in size. He likes small, very fine pieces, and he's got a couple of nice lots up this week. He he must have a following over there because he always seems to come up with them, and. Um, I suspect people know he buys the knows that he buys these things, and uh, they bring them to him uh, because he, he he gets them so regularly. I, he somehow has a very good network. And this is a nice piece of uh, carved coconut, very unusual. Typically, you see coconut, you know, the bowl forms, and sometimes you see teapot forms or um, um, uh, little 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 jars with covers on them and so forth. Maybe fitted with a tin liner or a silver liner at times. And this is a tiny vase. Uh, so if you're a collector of scholars objects, this would be a good thing to buy. Uh, it's about four, I think it was four inches in height. I'm going to double check here. It hasn't closed yet. Um, it's a little over four inches in height, 12 and a half centimeters. So it's around uh, five inches tall. Beautifully carved though. A beautiful, beautifully carved piece of uh, coconut. Nicely done. Rue head uh, uh, decoration around the feet. There's an inscription on the side. Nice surface, nice patina. It's got a little bit of dirt on it. Um, you don't want to disturb that surface if you buy these. You want to leave it just as it is. Maybe just with a slightly dampened cloth once in a while, wipe out some of the dirt or use a Q-tip just to take some of the dirt out of the creases. But be very careful. Again, no, no, no chemicals, no cleaners, no nothing like that ever on, on wood. Uh, it just ruins it. And if you do it by mistake or something happens or somebody somebody thinks they're doing you a favor and they clean something like this, um, you can use furniture oil. Um, uh, Howard's uh, Wax and Feed is a particular favorite of ours. We use it. We keep bottles of it around the house for the, for the wood carvings we have. And we find it to be very effective. We apply it to uh, almost everything at least two or three times a year, four times a year um, to, to keep the surface nice, to protect it, to keep it from drying out too much if it's wood, that sort of thing. All right. And uh, this is up to uh, only about $85 uh, uh, dollars U.S. It closes in three days. It ends on Monday. So uh, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, it's a nice thing. And, uh, and then this is also from the same seller is this very nice um, uh, scroll weight. Uh, I like this a lot. I think this is a very nice piece. So notice the patina on the stone. That it has got some dirt, some buildup, some gr is grunge as they call it in the trade. Uh, and that looks fine. Uh, it's a nice piece. It's about four or so inches in diameter. It's not a little tiny thing. It's, it's got some size to it. Um, what is this? I'm going to double check on the size. Uh, 11 centimeters, so it's it's a little over four inches in diameter, about four and a half inches in width. Uh, but nicely done. It's up to 105 dollars. This should close out at around six to nine hundred. And uh, if I didn't mention it, uh, this this should close for somewhere between probably 350, 400, and maybe maybe 550 or 600. But it's an unusual form. The coconut thing I meant to say. This is a very unusual form for this. Um, as I, I, I did as I say that they only done bowls, but to see them in vases is unusual because of the to get a coconut that'll 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 create that shape is are not easy to find because as you know coconuts are generally you know the size of softballs or grapefruits um, or, or or 
or bigger. Um, so getting one that's tall is a bit is a bit of a, a bit of a, a rarity. So you have to take that into account. And then this uh, this very nice robe is, is closing out. Uh, this is from also from Carpentine Pickard. Uh, down in Alabama. Uh, it's a nice looking robe. It's a, a late Qing robe. Nice rondelles on it. Uh, very well done. Nicely trimmed. I like the, the contrast of the black trim on it in particular. It's up to $2,250. I think it's probably got another thousand or so to go before it closes. And it ends um, later today. It ends later today. It'll be on the newsletter page. So if, you, if you're interested in it, scoot over there and, 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 and throw a bid on it. All right, and then also from, um, uh, this is a, a seller, I don't know, Tim Wick, um, uh, Tim Wicko, Tim, 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 Tim Wick. Um, he, he is uh, over in the UK. He's got these two very nice skirts, and they are a matched pair, uh, which is rather unusual. Uh, usually, you, you know, you, you don't often see pairs of skirts. And this is a very fine um, sort of cream color, ivory color, damask ground, and then um, with the needlework uh, down below in multiple colors and so forth. Uh, very nicely done. The quality here looks quite good, and I think the condition is quite good. I see a couple of little pulls at the bottom here, uh, but those aren't those aren't terribly significant, so I wouldn't worry about them too much. It's they're up to four hundred eighty-seven dollars, and I suspect this will hit up, upwards of eight hundred to a thousand by the time it's done, because there's two of them, and four hundred to five hundred, five fifty even for each one would not be an unreasonable price, especially with that beautiful silk damask. Um, the damask on it looks also very looks very good, and there's no staining to it. And you, you can often tell how well a, a, a silk has been treated by the by the single color areas that are open like this. Because if, if this is stained, other areas are likely to be stained as well. But if this area looks fine, then the other areas are probably um, a pretty pretty safe thing to buy. And uh, this is a late Qing example as well. And then over to this, this is a nice thing. Celadon crackle glaze figure of a, a Borama. Um, and this is, who's selling this? This is, oh, Mikulari has this. Uh, but it's, it's a nice looking uh, uh, Celadon with the, with the uh, 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 brown dressed uh, face. The facial details on this figure are very, very good. If you like these kinds of figures, come over and check it out because the, the way the beard is done, the, the eyes are quite large, very expressive, um, um, nicely done all the way down. It looks like it's in good shape. And it measures, um, it's pretty big as I recall. Yeah, it's, it is big. It's, it's almost, uh, this is a big piece. And it's funny because it reads like a small one. It reads like it's not that big, all right? But it's, it, it's, it's actually uh, uh, around uh, 15 inches tall. This is a pretty, it says large in the description, but he doesn't mean eight or nine inches. He means large. Uh, so this is, this is a 15 inch thing. And he's dating this to the early 20th century. Um, I'm not sure I agree with him on that. Um, See if we can get a look at the bottom here, if it'll load for me. I looked at that earlier and I was wondering why he thought that. And often you can get a more accurate uh, assessment of age by looking at the bases. Um, and, he's, and he tends to be kind of conservative on his dating of things. Um, okay, there's the bottom of it. Um, yeah, late Qing to early 20th century, I guess, yeah. But wonderful surface on it. That's the thing that's so interesting about this. The bottom of it does look like the bottom of, of, of seated uh, Buddhist figures and so forth from the, from the late 19th and early 20th century. But uh, the, the surface on this, the way the crackle was done, in almost a Qing Bai glaze. Um, uh, other sellers uh, might, might take this to be older. But uh, regardless, it's up to $145 and expect it to bring probably uh, four to 500 by the time it's over anyway. And then over to this, that pair of jars, just as a reminder, I got a couple of emails from people that like this, these jars. And, uh, um, and they, they were wondering, you know, if I could think of any similar examples. I've seen the scroll work before and, and very similar, but not always in these exact same colors, but stylistically quite similar. And they're up to $237. They close on Sunday. Both of these close on Sunday. They're pretty good size. I think they're eight or nine inches in height or something. Um, seven, yeah, they're, they're, they're 18 centimeters, so they're about seven inches tall a piece. Uh, they're, uh, but they're very unusual. They're very, very unusual. If you like unusual things, I would buy these. Uh, the, these are not things, you're not going to find a pair of them either. That's the other thing. These are a pair. And pairs are always, of course, very, very desirable. All right. So uh, keep, 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 keep that in mind. And uh, the price on these, these should come in between six and $800 for the pair, I would think, somewhere around there. 
And then other things that happened uh, during the week, we'll go through a couple of, uh, just quickly, uh, a few live auctioneers results. Um, uh, it was this, this, this was over on the uh, global pages and on the Patreon um, pages on uh, live auctioneers was this very interesting Anglo-Indian bone and brass inlaid walnut hardwood cabinet. Now this is a miniature. That's the part that caught my eye. I've seen these in, in, um, in uh, 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 full scale, full size. This is almost like a salesman sampler. Uh, it, it, there was a, many years ago, a friend of mine, his, his name was Carl Crossman, and he wrote the book on the uh, China trade. Um, the late Carl Crossman, he, he passed away sadly, he retired and moved to Florida uh, and uh, died a few years ago. But he wrote a, a book, he was a major collector of China trade and Anglo-Indian trade uh, furniture and so forth. And uh, he had, uh, uh, over the years, he had several full-size cabinets like this. And this reminded me of him. Um, he would have absolutely loved this. This was a great thing. And I think it went cheap. I think this was a, was a bargain. It's a 19th century cabinet, but beautifully made and uh, in a highly unusual form, highly unusual. And uh, sold for just $600 um, at Stair Gallery. This was the Stair Gallery sale. It closed out just a couple of days ago. It closed out, oh, it closed out yesterday, excuse me. And then there's this, the, um, uh, the, the Ch Kung Chi uh, Amari palette decorated. This was at Doyle's. Uh, this picture. It was a pretty nice one, um, and it was uh, how, how tall was this? Did they bother? It was ten inches tall. It was decent size. Had some repairs to it, nods and ends, but very nice form. The potting on it was quite good. Um, it had some repairs to the spout and here and there and whatnot. But overall, it was a, it was a, a very attractive piece, so good looking, and it sold for just five hundred and fifty dollars plus the buyer's premium. So that wasn't a bad buy at all. And in the same sale, they had this this very nice again Chinese Amari Kung Chi period. Um, they just dated it conservatively as 18th century. Uh, to me, I, th I think it, you know, it, 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 it's Kang Shi period. Um, and it sold for $300 plus premium, and it was seven inches in diameter. And there was, in the condition report, um, I don't think there was any damage to this. So um, that was a pretty good buy, I think, for a seven inch Kang Shi Amari bowl with, with the, with the uh, gilding and so forth in uh, such good condition. Overall, it looked like it was in very nice shape. Um, maybe one of you got a condition report on it and found out something otherwise, but uh, um, it looked like a nice thing. And uh, for $450, $500, perfectly reasonable buy. And then this, the desk set, this was that clobbered desk set. I, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago because these, these desk sets are, are fairly unusual. And finding clobbered reticulated examples are even more unusual. It was estimated at, well, this it was a crazy estimate. This was Akaba down in Del, Dana, Dana, Beach, Dania Beach in Florida had this. Uh, it was pretty good size. It was, uh, what was it? It was eight inches wide. It had been, and as I said, it had been clobbered, it had been it, it, it colors added when it got to the west, which was a fairly common thing up in the, in the Netherlands and so forth. They did these. And I suspect that's where it came from. Uh, but this looks like a Kang Shi piece, and uh, it went for uh, $1,300 plus premium. But uh, absolutely worth it. And as, and as we've talked about in the past, uh, these clobberwares seem to be getting traction. People are starting to appreciate them. And I think maybe appreciating them also because of, of, of why clobbering was done and when it was done and the history of it and so forth. So um, it's, something, it's something to uh, maybe think about uh, because they're still relatively inexpensive. Um, compared to the pieces that are actually um, uh, un unclobbered, uh, th they still seem to sell for more. I don't know why. Uh, I think I think the history of clobbering is very interesting. And then uh, over to this, the uh, Famille Rose uh, Yongshen period uh, uh, tea, uh, teapot and under tray and cup. Um, nice example, nice looking teapot. And again, uh, these kinds of teapots, we see them around. It's got it's got a minor chips and nicks. They did a pretty good job. This was Topwells was selling this down in, I think they're in New York, right? Um, Hyde Park, New York, um, ended up selling for just $700 plus premium. And uh, I think that was a very good buy because in the past we've seen the teapot just alone without the cup and without the saucer sell for, oh, $1,300 to $1,800 at times. That seems to be the price range. And this one sold for 700 for all three pieces plus the premium. So you're up around uh, around $900 for it instead of, uh, you know, upwards of 2000 So it's sort of a half price deal. This sold on uh, April 7th. All right. So uh, that wasn't a bad thing. And then uh, lastly was this, this very nice Femi Vera seated Quan Yin. 
Uh, I love this. I thought this was a great thing. Um, it was on the global pages. If you missed it, uh, you, you, you should have probably looked at it, I guess. Uh, nice decoration, beautifully enameled. And uh, when I first saw it, I wasn't quite sure how old it was because the, the lighting on it seemed a little bit yellow in tone. Uh, but then um, they, they provided some uh, pictures of the Guinness bottle, giving it some proportion. And uh, there's the bottom of it. And that's early 18th, uh, early 18th century Kung Shi ware, uh, pretty, pretty much, I think. And uh, there's an old later label from um, Fred S. Tucker, Santa Barbara. And I don't know if Fred Tucker was a dealer or a collector, uh, but I liked his sticker. I liked his, his, his uh, label. I'm going to bet that was an antique shop. I'm going to bet that was an antique shop. And it sold for $3,600 plus the premium. So around $4,500, $4,700 by the time you're all done. But a rare form, rare form. And uh, it measured, it was pretty good size, right? Yeah, seven inches tall. So it was decent size. And it's just sort of, it's almost like biscuit wear. But uh, I like the position, the way she, the, the, the figure was posed. And uh, it was pretty charming, I think. So anyway, so that's sort of it for the week. Um, I'm, I'm going to get this done because I, I, I don't want to, uh, we have to upload this video and it's probably going to take a couple of hours to upload and hopefully I can get it up before the end of the day. And uh, the beach is right over there. And um, I've got, I've got, I'm reading a, a couple of very good books, by the way, on uh, Kindle. I, I, we loaded up the Kindle on the way down. Uh, right before we left, we added a few things on the way. And I'm reading a really great book on the, the history of the China trade um, uh, that gives a whole interesting perspective um, it was, it's called When um, America Met China, and it is an outstanding book. If you've read it, you're nodding your head, and if you haven't read it, I would urge you to get it. And uh, we'll talk about that a bit more. I'm about three quarters of the way through it. I've read most of it this the last three day, two days, three days, and it's very, very good, beautifully written. And I've got five others on the Kindle um, already loaded that I'm going to read, and we'll talk about those and um, so forth. So here we are. Have a great, great week uh, at home. I hope all of you are well, and um, we're doing, I'm doing my best to keep up with things down here in, in my uh, in spare time and things. Um, but uh, I'm also trying to relax and uh, um, uh, you know eat some food, sleep, sleep well, and enjoy the water and do all that stuff because I, I was pretty exhausted by the end of the winter with everything that went on uh, between one thing and another. And, and uh, it's it's great being here. It's just great being here. So and we're getting lots of rest. We have this beautiful um, uh, spot right here on the beach. So um, uh, thank you for your patience on, on the video if it's, if, it, if it's got so many issues, but we're doing our best. All right, subscribe if you haven't. Join us over on Patreon, and thanks so much for watching. Okay, bye-bye.